Hi guys, welcome. Um, <laughs> hope you all had a great Christmas and New Year. Uh, I certainly very much enjoyed myself. I was invited to go down and see some friends in North Devon. We had a blast. It was great. Um, but yeah, back now on the boat. Um, and I thought just as a change, it would be an idea maybe to look back on the last year, my first year of uh, living on the boat. Um, what were, you know, what made me make that decision? Um, and I suppose ultimately, did I make the right decision or did I make a mistake? So basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to sort of turn the clock back to January of last year. Where was I? Well, January of last year saw me in my camper van in Morocco. Uh, somewhere I regularly used to go um, for the winter period. So I found another great uh, wild spot for lunch. Absolutely in the middle of nowhere. I absolutely love Morocco. <clears throat> I've been going regularly for the past 20 odd years. Um, yeah, it's a fascinating country. Sometimes though it's difficult to get to places. You can see clouds and clouds of dust there. Then you've got the local wildlife, obviously. But there's also some great places to camp up if you've got a camper van. And of course, there's always the uh, the famous signs, Timbuktu in 52 days. These are the famous painted rocks near Tafrail. These were painted back in 1981 by a Belgian artist, probably high on uh, drugs, I think, at the time. <laughs> Another great place to visit, of course, is the Todra Gorge. Absolutely stunning, very popular tourist attraction. And of course, no visit to Morocco would be complete without going down to the desert and the sand dunes. But it was time to leave Morocco and return to Spain. So I spent some time in Spain before uh, eventually following the coast up um, towards uh, France and uh, reluctantly back to England at the time. Now, while I was in Morocco, um, in fact, over the last Christmas of 2022, um, I was starting to think, mm, I really need a change. Um, I'd been almost 15 years full time in, in motorhomes and camper vans. And I'd got to the situation, and I've said this on other vlogs, I was just going round and round in circles, basically, going to the same countries, to the same, almost to the same places, not exactly, but almost. Um, but effectively, yeah, I was, re you know, retracing my steps all the time. And then with Brexit and the restrictions that that brought up, it just made life a little bit more difficult. So I started to think, you know, what's the alternative? And I suppose the obvious way to think was be a life afloat, a boat. And so I started sort of thinking along those lines. So having arrived back in the UK, um, I started to look through the various magazines and some press and things like that. Got in touch with some marinas, some brokerages, and in fact went and looked at quite a few boats. And eventually I got in touch with Wilt Marina near Daventry and went along and, and to see some of the boats. And they've got quite a big selection of boats seemingly at any one time for sale. <clears throat> and... Um, I wasn't looking for a huge boat. Uh, costings are always on the length of the boat. So, yeah, I know they say the optimum size of a boat is around 50, 55 foot. Um, but, yeah, if it was a bit smaller, I'm on my own, a little bit smaller seemed to be the ideal size. And they had a boat for sale, a uh, 47 footer. And I was quite taken with it. Um, it needed some TLC, it's got to be said. But overall, yeah, it, it was quite a nice boat. Cruiser stern. But I kept humming and ahhing, humming and ahhing, you know, mm, shall I, shall I, you know, shall I look at more boats? And I did, I kept looking at a little bit, but I kept coming back to that particular boat at Wilton. And uh, eventually got to the point where I thought, yeah, I'm going to make, I'm going to take the plunge. I'm going to go and make an offer on this boat. So um, I sort of thought to myself, I would go up on a Saturday morning. Well, it just happened that uh, on the Saturday morning that I was going to go up to Wilton and try and make an offer on this particular boat. I woke up in the morning, my phone pinged and it was from Wilton Marina and because I'd been in contact with them and gone to see a boat, they put me onto their mailing list and so every time a new boat came in for sale, they would actually ping me a, 
an email across. And so I opened this email up and there was a, a boat there that looks amazing. It really did. And I thought, wow, you know, I like the look of that. It was the right size at 46 foot uh, and looked in superb condition. So I thought, well, OK, I'm going up there today anyway. Uh, I can have a look. <clears throat> so I arrive at Wooten Marina, spoke to the guys there and they're super, super helpful in Wilton Marina. I couldn't recommend them enough, to be honest. Um, and I said, oh, I just got this this morning, you know, for this this boat. This, oh, yeah, we've got the keys. Go and have a look. Well, I only took one look at it and thought, hmm, this is the boat I'd like to buy. Um, and I ended up with it. It's Bubbly 2. It's the boat I now live on. As I said, it, it's a 46-foot it's a um, cruiser stern, as you've probably noticed and seen in the vlogs. Um, but, yeah, I love it. It's an absolutely great boat. Um, been well looked after it's not a new boat people often say because it's so shiny it must be relatively new but in fact it was built in uh, 1988 it had had a full survey done um, at the time it was uh, taken to Wilton so uh, that was all in good order and uh, I made an offer and that offer was accepted and uh, then the paperwork obviously had to take place and an exchange and bills of sale etc and about two to three weeks later, I was given the keys to Bubbly 2 and it became my new home. Um, Wilt Marina allowed me to stay in the marina for two weeks while I got myself organised. Uh, and during that period of time, I got uh, solar panels fitted onto the boat because I decided to, do, to become a continuous cruiser. So obviously solar was important as far as the power was concerned. So I had all that done and uh, yeah, everything went well. But then having sort of got settled in as far as the boat was concerned, living wise, uh, I then had to get out onto the uh, the cut and uh, sort of practice, learn whatever uh, with regards to the navigation of the boat. So um, first of all, I took the boat out onto the Grand Union where um, Wilton is. Yeah, so I say, just getting ready to leave. Sorry about the train going past. It's one of the drawbacks with Wilton Marina. It's a super place to buy a boat, but if you're here for any length of time, you've got a railway line that runs along one side of it, and you've got the M1 motorway, which is just behind some trees to my, uh, to my left. So it can be a little bit noisy at times. So I'm looking forward to getting a little bit further south and maybe getting into some more rural countryside. Let's see, let's see how we get on. So leaving Wilton Marina, um, I effectively turned right and made my first sort of tentative steps along the Grand Union for my first solo cruise. All aboard Bubbly 2, my new home. OK, so um, after those first tentative steps, um, having left Whoop Marina, it went quite well, actually. Uh, I was quite pleased. Uh, I still remembered quite a bit from many, many years ago. Um, so it wasn't too bad. But I made my way down the Grand Union, uh, not too far, a few miles before turning around and making my way back. And then uh, once I was back at uh, Wilton Marina, or effectively um, moored up outside Wilton Marina again, I stayed there for a couple of nights before then embarking on my uh, adventures proper. And I made my way up through the Buckby Locks and then up towards uh, Braunston and Braunston Tunnel. The tunnel was a new thing for me. Uh, I've never been through a long tunnel like that before. So that was a bit of an experience. But uh, yeah, again, that went quite well. Um, and on the other side, on the far side of the tunnel, I eventually came into Braunston to go on to the, uh, the North Oxford Canal. And uh, I then subsequently went all the way up the North Oxford, up through Rugby and all the way up to Hawkesbury Junction, uh, onto the Coventry Canal a little bit and down towards Coventry before returning, coming back to the North Oxford. And I spent a bit, fair bit of time going back up and down that uh, section of the North Oxford Canal. I really enjoyed it, actually. Um, it was super, and uh, I met some really lovely people along there in their boats. But as time progressed, as the year moved on, um, I decided that I needed to, or wanted to go a little bit further afield. So I then, uh, late summer, um, took off once again up to Hawkesbury Junction. This time I turned right onto the Coventry Canal and followed the Coventry Canal all the way up to Fradley Junction. And then from there turned on to the Trent and Mersey Canal and made my way up towards Burton-on-Trent. So I then made my way all the way back 
along the uh, the Trent Mersey back to the Coventry, down to Coventry, and eventually back towards uh, Rugby uh, and the North Oxford Canal, which is basically where I spent the, the sort of last part of the year um, before actually then taking uh, a mooring spot in Barbie Moorings. And the reason I'd done that was purely and simply because I'd got invitations to go away for the Christmas and the New Year. Um, I was away for Christmas, as I said earlier on, I had an absolute blast. It was really, really good um, time with uh, some really good friends. So basically, that brought me right away through to the end of uh, 2023. Uh, looking back, did I make a mistake? No, absolutely not. I think I made the right decision for me. I mean, obviously, we're all different. Uh, and some people would find that living on a boat on their own would be lonely, um, you know, they would get depressed and things like that. But um, I'm used to living on my own. In fact, I quite enjoy it. I like my own company, so it's great. Don't get me wrong. I love to um, meet with other people and laugh and joke and do all the things you do with friends. But I'm quite content to live for the main, most part on my own. So from that point of view, it's worked out really well. As for Bubbly 2, yeah, I, I think uh, that again was a good decision and a right decision for me. Um, I've had one or two, you know, little problems with it. Um, but then, you know, you're not going to buy uh, any boat, I don't suppose, uh, other than the new one. And even a new one, you can have teething problems. But uh, the, the problems I've had have been pretty minor. Soon after moving on board, I found that the three-way fridge uh, was uh, leaking uh, a little bit, and my carbon monoxide alarm had kept going off. And it was a little bit dangerous, quite frankly. Um, I bought myself effectively a 12 volt domestic, well, it's a domestic fridge, but with a 12 volt motor instead of a mains motor. So it's a, a domestic size fridge and that's worked absolutely brilliantly. I've had a couple of issues with the stern gland. Um, first off, the packing went and it needed repacking. And um, while I got it done pretty quickly, I don't think it was done shall we say to the best that it was possibly able to get i don't know um and other than that i've changed the water pump um and that's something that could go at any time you know quite frankly um my overall experience today has been very positive i'm really happy that i made the decision um and i'm really looking forward to the future now um i'm going to be back out on the cut uh, by the end of this month and uh, looking forward to venturing further afield. Um, I've got one or two loose plans in my mind as to what I'd like to do. I'd like to possibly get up to the Macclesfield uh, Canal and go up towards the Peak District. Um, everyone tells me that's an absolutely stunning place to be and to, to go and visit. So that's uh, something I'd like to do and see where life takes me from there. Um, generally speaking, you know, no plan is a good plan for me. Um, you need to make a few more plans, I think, with a boat than you do with a, a camper van because you're not travelling quite as quickly. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to 2024. So would I recommend uh, buying a boat? Yeah, certainly. Um, obviously, I haven't come from bricks and mortar and bought a boat. Uh, and I do live on mine full time. Obviously, there are lots and lots of people that have their house and they have a boat as well. Um, so I'm looking at it purely and simply from the point of view of full-time liverboard, uh, generally as a continuous cruiser. And uh, yeah, I, I, I would highly recommend it. Uh, certainly from a, a money-saving point of view, it's proved to be successful. And uh, yeah, if you, can, uh, if you can adapt to the way of life, the slow pace of life, because it is slow, um, you know, it, there's no way you can make it quick. Um, you know, you're limited to four miles per hour on the canals, which is basically walking pace. So whether you're walking the towpath or going on your boat, you're traveling much the same speed. So you're not going to get anywhere <laughs> particularly quickly. But that's all part and part of the fun, isn't it? You know, to relax, to unwind, just to take life easy, take in all the sights and the sounds, you know, move uh, through nature really, really slowly and take it all in. So, yeah, overall, I think I made the right decision and uh, yeah, I'm really pleased that I did. So I hope you've enjoyed this little uh, little vlog. Um, and again, if, if anyone's got any questions with regards to living 
um, on a narrowboat full time, then do leave a comment below. Um, I'll always try and get back to you. Be good if you could do that. OK, I'm going to leave it there. Thanks very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you all on the next one. Thanks again.